भगवतीयुक्तम श्लोके भक्ति भगवती नैष्ट की so uh, today we are reading we will read um, canto 1 chapter 6 and then uh, verse 11 to 14 so what we will do we will just do a little recap it will be good for someone who has not come for the previous classes or someone wants to have a quick recap actually i like it so that you know you understand the flow and then you go to that uh, and then uh, we will discuss little bit of 11 to 14 and at the end we can little bit discuss about the Acharya and uh, Nityananda Prabhu this um, week 15th of um, 15th of um, February was Advaita Acharya Prabhu's appearance we will discuss little bit who is he and then <coughs> Nityananda Prabhu's appearance is coming on 21st February which is coming week <coughs> and we will discuss a little bit uh, about that also okay just give me one minute let me just uh, pull up Why it is not? Oh, my God, yeah, sorry, my God. Okay, so you can see that <coughs> first came to chapter four is, uh, sorry, uh, four is the appearance of Sri Narada, then five is Narada, in, Narada Muni's instruction on Srimad Bhagavatam for Vasudev and 6 is conversation between Narada and Vaisdev. So in the 4th chapter, I will just little uh, touch base so that we understand the flow. So in the uh, end of the 4th chapter, we see that Vaisdev who has compiled all the Vedas, Puran, Upanishad, he was not feeling happy, he was feeling despondent. Um, and uh, he was sitting in uh, besides the river of Chalashwati um, and then he was thinking that why I am not feeling the satisfaction or the fulfillment in our in my heart and at that point of time Narad Muni his spiritual master appeared that is that's how chapter 4 ends so we see that even if we are little away from spiritual master we should never think that spiritual master and me doesn't have any connection it's not the spirituality does not belong does not depend on the physical proximity but it is actually at the subtle level at the spiritual level spiritual you are always taken care by the spiritual master and we should and a disciple should always think that spiritual master is always present with him Prabhupada <coughs> multiple times he has quoted that uh, one day i remember my guru maharaj uh, was serving to Prabhupada and then um, uh, and uh, Pro, he said that oh Prabhupada uh, I wish that if I could be there with you when you reach to US and you are all alone there was nobody uh, no disciple you just reach and you you have to kind of wandering into the um, US street I wish if I could be there with you to serve you help you assist you Prabhupada said I was never alone my Guru Maharaj is always, is always with me. So that is the mood disciples should always have. And Guru Maharaj, the spiritual master also takes care. So we see that whenever Vaisdev has, a, has got some uh, sadness in his mind, uh, not being able to fulfill. So his mission, immediately Narad Muni appeared to guide him. So that is how first and the fourth chapter ends. And then, <coughs> so in the fifth chapters, it is a Narada's instruction. So Narada Muni, first of all, in that chapter, Narada Muni, first of all, praise Vaisdev that you have done such a magnanimous job. Who can write so many Vedas volume, Upanishad, Puran, Vedanta Sutra? You have really done something. But the reason you are not feeling the bliss or the fulfillment in your heart, because you have not sufficiently glorified 
the object of Veda, the knower of Veda, the goal of Veda, and who is he? Krishna. Veda is your survey, Ahumeva Vidyo, Vedanta Pridveda Vidyavacha. So by studying all the Vedas, what do you need to understand? Who is Krishna? What is our relation? And what is the goal of our life? Right? And then you have not sufficiently glorified. And then there is a very beautiful two verse come in the fifth uh, chapter, one uh, first and fifth chapter and tenth verse, number 10 and number 11. So very wonderful um, point, um, Narada Muni is pointing, any literature which does not sufficiently glorify Supreme Personality of Godhead, no matter how beautifully it is composed, it is known as the pilgrimage of crows. <coughs> this is you might have heard. It is known as the pilgrimage of crows. And in the next verse he says, on the other hand, anything that has composed to describe the glories or pastimes of the name, fame, uh, pastime, beauty of Supreme Personality of Godhead, no matter how um, incorrectly or ineffectively it has been composed, it is always sung by the sages and the pure devotees. So, <clears throat> meaning that you can all understand, I don't need to explain you. So, this is a two important point um, as they presented. So, uh, and uh, sorry, Narada Muni presented and then Bas, he instructed Basdev, now you compile everything and give the summary. And as we know, the summary is Srimad Bhagavatam. Later on, Basdev, following the instruction of Narada Muni, uh, compiled um, Srimad Bhagavatam, which is known as the Nigamo Kalpataru Golitam Falam. So, it's basically the um, fruit of the tree, yeah, of the Kalpataru, of the desired tree. Just like a fruit is the most important part of a tree, similarly all Vedas are summarized in a jeet format, it's called Srimad Bhagavatam. That's why in the ISKCON we only read, we read Bhagavad Gita and once you understand the basic instruction of who am I, who is God and what is the relation, we they are advised to read Srimad Bhagavatam to, understand, to uh, develop the love of God. Now, uh, at the end of the fifth chapter, Basdev was curious to know how Narad Muni becomes such a great devotee. So, Narad Muni actually uh, narrated his pastime. In the previous part, he was a, he was a uh, <coughs> son of a maid servant. And that maid servant, what happens in, during a rainy day of four months, is called Chatur Masho. There are some sages and devotee kings and the maid servant and his son, who is actually previous birth of Narad Muni, serve them, take their remnants, hear from them, and that's that's how that's how Narad Muni developed the love of Godhead. So this is how the fifth chapter ends. And the sixth chapter, Basde was more curious that once you get the spiritual initiation and the knowledge, um, uh, what did you do? Now, interesting point is that at that point of point, Narad Muni's age was only five years. You see, uh, there are many other devotees who actually got the spiritual enlightenment within the five years old. Can you name some? Prahlad yeah. Maharaj and also Dhruva Maharaj. Right? So you see, Srimad Bhagavatam entire uh, many places, those pure devotees come uh, you know, store of your past tense comes within five years, they get enlightened. So we say, right, that oh, they are keys, let them have fun. It's okay to have the fun, but at least uh, they, we parents' duty is to, our uh, teachers and parents' duty is to help them for the spiritual inclination. Uh, there's a verse comes in the seventh canto, chapter six, verse one. Very, very important verse given by Prahlad Maharaj. It says, Komara, Komar Achare Prabhu. Means, if the Komar age, and Komar age starts from the five. <coughs> After, before that, it's a Ballo, Ballo, it's a Ballo uh, time. So, in that age only, somebody should start the spiritual journey. So, those who have already children and those who are planning for the children, Please remember this instruction of Prahlad Maharaj. It is, it is okay for the kids to have fun, but from the childhood only, it is important 
to engage them in the service, little hearing. There are lots of kids' book for the Krishna and all. Just you can, you can, uh, big time, you can actually read with them. So there are many different ways, right? The idea is that when the soil is soft, you should plow and you should put the seed. Because when they grow up, their heart becomes hard and it is very, it is not very receptive that time. So from the very beginning, we should practice. That is a Srimad Bhagavatam and injunction. So anyway, so moving forward, what happens is that uh, Narad, uh, the sage is gone and then Narad Muni explained that I was under the custody of my mother because my mother, uh, that is only one uh, son and uh, I was bound with the affection. Therefore, I have no place to go. I was just uh, spending time with the affection of the mother. And one night what happens that mother and she, he is completely dependent on the mother that Narad Muni at the five years naturally. So one day, one night what happened, uh, her, his mother went to uh, milk the cow and uh, the uh, one snake bites and she died. So you can understand that how painful for a five years old boy to lose the only dependent parents is actually the mother. But if you read Srimad Bhagavatam, that is covered, but I don't want to go details because it is already covered, but I just want to keep the flow. So what um, uh, um, Narad Muni says, Narad Muni did not take it as a distress, but took it as a mercy of Krishna because she, he became free to move and see the beauty and the creation of Lord. Now, last time, Balavatra Prabhu has explained one uh, very um, important verse of Srimad Bhagavatam 10th chapter. Anybody remember? What is that verse? Uh, it says Balavatra Prabhu pointed out. Yeah, Bhagavatam. In this regard, this is 1088, right? Yeah. It says that whenever somebody approaches to Krishna, Krishna actually deprive him all the wealth and give distress so that all the relative actually abandon and thus he gets the distress so that he can be more surrendered to Krishna and that's a Krishna's ways. Now many people if you somebody here you will say oh my god that's so complicated better we, we do the demigod worship but that's that's the way Krishna actually uh, reciprocate. You see if you see the Tenth offense, we, we just in the morning chanted the tenth uh, offense, right? What is the tenth offense? What is the tenth offense? Who remembers? Uh, that is eleventh. Yeah, to not have complete faith on the holy name of the Lord and to maintain the material attachment even after understanding so many instructions. So you see, so you will see generally, at least me, I can talk that even if we are trying to chant and serve, we also want a comfortable life, right? Materially comfortable life so that, you know, we don't have a distress. So within that comfortable life, we want to serve Krishna and chant. But you see, um, it is said that until and unless we don't get rid of this material attachment, our spiritual progress does not start. For example, if I want to go to Calgary to Edmonton, how do I know that I'm, I'm approaching to Edmonton is basically as the distance to Edmonton is decreasing and the distance to Calgary is increasing. Material attachment and the Krishna consciousness is diametrically opposite. You cannot have two together and do it. Yes, you can improve, you can progress, but that will not give you the ultimate uh, goal of life. Material attachment, you need to, uh, while doing the service, you need to give up the material attachment, but not mechanically, but through the service, automatically you will uh, lose the taste of this material attachment. Therefore, what Krishna does is that Krishna understands that devotee has a problem to get out of this material attachment. Therefore, he gives the distress and those who are pure devotee accept this as a mercy of Lord. Just like Narad Muni did. And as a result of which Narad Muni becomes free from that attachment and then he actually took the life of a Puri Brajakacharya. So this is a context. Now we will start 11, 12, 13, 14 verse. 
we can't uh, do recite all the verse so we will recite the verse only 13 but we will just um, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, try, you know read the translation to just kind of be connected in the flow so we'll just invoke the prayers now Om Gyanam Dimiranda So Gyanam Jana Salakaya Chakshur Militam Jena Tashmai Si Guru Venama Si Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sapitam Jana Bhutale Shain Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Shabadantikam Vandeham Si Guru Sri Jita Padakamalam Si Guru Vaishnavansya Si Rupam Shakra Jatam Shagana Raghunata Nitam Tam Swadibam Swadaitam Swabdutam Parijana Shaitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Shagana Lalita Siddhisaka Nitam Shya Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutali Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Sarasate Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunnavadi Pashyatta Deshatarine E Krishna Purana Shindu Dina Vandu Yagatpati Kopi Shogu Pika Kanto Radha Kanto Namastuti Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radha Vinda Manisha श्री विश्वानी श्रुते देवी प्रणामानी अरित्ये जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत वरदा शिवा श्री गौर भक्तविंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हम कौन पर की बात हम बोल रहे हैं कि दिन पर कर रहे हैं ओके सो वी विल गो टू दिस टुडेस थीम दैट नारद मुनि बिकेम परिवर्तक आचार्य so uh, it starts from the 11 and we'll just read the translation only chapter only takes 13 we will recite the words after my departure i passed through many flashing eyes of course Narod, you can understand that Narod Muni is saying you can see that right after my departure i passed through many flourishing metropolis towns uh, the villages, animal farms, mines, agricultural land, valleys, flower gardens, nursery gardens, and natural <laughs> forests. Prabhupada write uh, in the part that not that these things are very new, the metropolitan city, industry, farm, mines, it's not something in the on, in our modern days we can see. These are also, also presented to the ages. Uh, even <coughs> million of years ago also this is there it's just history repeat in every yuga so then 12 i passed through hills and mountains full of reservations of uh, sorry full of reservoirs of various minerals like gold silver and copper uh, um, and through tracks um, uh, tracks of land with reservoirs of water filled uh, with beautiful lotus flowers fit for the desians of heaven and they are decorated with the bewildered bees and the singing birds so nothing to explain he's just moving and seeing the and appreciating the creation of the creator if you see in the so bhagavad gita 10 chapter krishna says whatever you see the beautiful thing actually understand that is a spark of my opulence so uh, one of the important fact of the devotee is to actually whenever you see the beauty of the nature uh, to basically relate that oh that's so wonderful creation of the supreme creator okay so we will read uh, this uh, verse 13 nala venu sarastanva Kushaki Chaka Gabharam Kushaki Chaka Gabharam Eka Ivatia to Aham Eka Ivatia to Aham Adraksham Bipanam Maha Adraksham Bipanam Maha Ghoram Prati Vayakaram Ghoram Prati Vayakaram Baya Lo Baya lo luka shiva jiram. What by what meaning? Okay, uh, you, anybody wants to recite this? Yeah, go ahead. Nala venu sharastamba. Nala venu sharastamba. <coughs> Eka eva tia toham, Eka eva tia toham, 
अद्राक्षं विपिनम महा घोरम प्रति भयाकारम शिवाजीरम एनीबॉडी एल्स फ्रॉम माथा साइड एटलीस्ट वी शुड कम कंप्लीट थ्री टाइम्स फॉर दिस साइड सो ट्राई प्लीज एनीबॉडी नाला बेनु शरस्तंभा नाला बेनु शरस्तंभा घोरम प्रति भयाकारम वर्ड बाई वर्ड मीनिंग नाला पाइप्स वेणु बंबू शरा पेन्स तनबा फूल ऑफ कुशा शार्प ग्रास की चटा वीड्स गावरम केव्स एका एलोन एवा ओनली अति ताया अति ताया अति सॉरी अति ताया था डिफिकल्ट टू गो थ्रू अहम आई अद्रक्षम डिजिटेड दीपिनम डी फॉरेस्ट महत ग्रेट घोरम फियरफुल प्रति भाया करम डेंजरसली वैला स्नेक्स उलुका आउल्स शिवा जैकल्स अजीराम प्लेग्राउंड ट्रांसलेशन एंड पार्पर बाय हिस डिवाइन के जैसी भक्ति के नाम तो शामिल शिलोपोपा शिलोपोपा की आई देन पास चलों थ्रू मिनी फॉरेस्ट ऑफ राशिस बंबूस ड्रीड्स शार्प ग्रास वीट्स एंड केव्स व्हिच वाज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू गो थ्रू अलोन आई विजिटेड डीप डार्क एंड which were the players of snakes owls and jackals parpat it is the duty of a mendicant oribajak acharya to experience all varieties of god's creation by traveling alone through all forest hill towns village etc to gain the faith in god and strength of mind as well as to enlighten the inhabitant with the message of god so um, actually uh, there are four types of sannyasis uh, <clears throat> probably elsewhere explain is called um, kutija bahuda oribajak acharya and paramamsha kutija means somebody renunciate from the family stay out of the family but take all the foods and the necessities delivered from the family so they don't stay with the family they stay outside but <clears throat> they take the necessities from the family and the another step is another advancement is bahuda uh, which is they don't rely on the family but they become bigger so they become madhukari so they takes uh, they goes door to door bake some food and with that whatever he collected they actually eat and they live a very simple life this is called bahuda more advancement of that is called poribrajak acharya poribrajak means wandering means roaming around and acharya means who actually leads with setting the example acharya means who actually leads with his example his life is an example he teaches by the example of his own life he basically preaches uh, the uh, culture of devotion by his own life is called prodip rajakacharya like proba shilo proba this is a prodip rajakacharya and then param hangsho is another advancement param hangsho param hangsho means basically raj hangsho it's called swan right swan if you see the swan um he has they have a uh, one uh, god gifted quality if you just mix the milk and the water they will just take the milk and they will leave the water nobody can do that swan can do that so similarly they are called paramamsho because in advanced stage because they can actually differentiate the material thing and the spiritual thing so even if it is mingled they can only extract the spiritual essence leaving the material essence apart okay so that is called that is why we call, they, we call it uh, we call them paramamsho 
is a very very advanced stage then brindavan if you see the brindavan <coughs> goshamis basically we call them goshamis go means uh, the senses and swami means the uh, who actually owns who controls the senses so he is the they are the complete controller of the senses so they are actually in the paramamsha level if you if you look in our um, uh, after the mangalarti and all we say uh, om uh, vishnu par paramamsha paribraja ashtottara shato he is divine guest ac bhakti vedanta shami shila prabhupad ki jai so how many of you understand fully the meaning so let me om vishnu pad means the, that who has surrendered in the into the vishnu om vishnu pad paramhamsha paramhamsha means we just explain paramhamsha and paribraja because uh, he actually shilopopa travel all over the world to preach the krishna consciousness ashtottara shatam means 108 times we did uh, the dandavat to his divine guest ac bhakti vedanta shami shilopopa so you see such a uh, important meaning so when you uh, in the next time when you in the mangalarti somebody recites that and when you do dandavat please meditate on that meaning because all those prayers and all is not just to memorize and recite but it is important to meditate on that that actually opens our mind and there are a lot of books and google what if you have a question about what is the meaning you can always search all our study for this okay a sannyasi is duty bound to take all these risks without fear and the most typical sannyasi of the present age is lord chaitanya how many of you know who is chaitanya mahaprabhu oh sorry let me ask how many of you are not aware who is chaitanya mahaprabhu that's okay if you are not aware it's okay everybody knows chaitanya mantra okay so actually you know everybody knows krishna right krishna is the supreme personality of god in bhagavad gita it is detailed out but in the uh, but krishna's uh, how to approach krishna how to love krishna in this modern kali yuga how to actually uh, develop our uh, love to krishna in order to teach us krishna came as sri chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu in the kali yuga 550 years before in west bengal his name is chaitanya mahaprabhu if you can see there are two uh, personality small deities raising their hand you can see that they are um, uh, called chaitanya mahaprabhu who is always uh, uh, the left hand side from this way and then right hand side called nitananda prabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu in the scripture of simad bhagavatam it is explained chaitanya mahaprabhu is non different than krishna krishna varna trisha krishna sanga pangasta pashrata sankirtan jagdai pray jajanti isu medas 11.5.32 it says krishna will come in a akrishna varna that is in the uh, in the molten uh, golden form uh, uh, sorry golden uh, um, color and he will actually teach us he will not come as a god he will come as a devotee of god but he is god but he came in the um, uh, as a devotee of god to teach us how to develop the devotion to krishna and he actually propagated this hari krishna mahamantra he did not invent or start it it is already there in the kolishantara upanishad he just propagated the that in kali yuga this is the best way because not everybody can come to temple we have work we have busy so how we can actually practice the krishna uh, bhakti or devotion is by chanting the holy name and hearing about krishna that is his uh, way of teaching and we are following that teaching iskon is actually gauriya vishnava is coming from chaitanya mahaprabhu and his right hand side is nitananda prabhu whose appearance is coming on the next week is actually none other than balaram you know balaram right krishna's first expansion so he is balaram so here it is says that lord chaitanya is the greatest sannyasi in kali yuga who traveled in the same manner through the central indian jungle enlightening even the tigers bears snakes deer elephant and many other jungle animal now this is very interesting right oh, well when uh, you know somebody going to uh, go to forest they will be scared mm, the real sannyasi not only they are scared but chaitanya mahaprabhu exhibited a, a magnanimous pastime that by chant he made all the tigers bears elephant to dance and chant 
No, somebody may say, come on, it's too much. Come on, how is that possible? But you have to understand that this is Krishna, Supreme Personality of God. Supreme Personality of God is lifting the Govardha wheel in the, in the smallest finger of the left hand. We can't even lift this laptop for seven minutes. See, he actually lifted the full mountain in seven days, seven nights. So Krishna is the creator of billion of universe. And same Krishna is present in every living entities as a Paramatma. So if he can guide us, why he can't guide the living entities? When I, I remember I was in Honduras and then uh, for some software project, uh, it is in Latin America, those who don't know where is Honduras. So there was a Spanish guy, he, he became my friend and um, a little, uh, you know, and he he, he, he he is actually my client side. He, he's at my client and he's little um, uh, religious, spiritual, you can say. He's, of course, he's a Christian and he he's, he's becomes a uh, little curious about to know the science of soul. And I gave some proper book. So he liked it, he did it and he said he appreciated the fact. But he was saying, uh, slow, you know, about we are talking of the vegetarianism, and then he said, Come on, don't tell me that animal also has soul, it is too much for us to digest. I said, Oh, if you have consciousness, and the symptom of the uh, and the source of that consciousness is soul, living entities also, every living being also has a consciousness, they also have a feeling, they also have a pain, they also have a hunger, they also enjoy sex. So Everything that you have in a gross way, animal also has. So if your consciousness, source of consciousness is soul, why is it uh, not logical to think that living entities also has a soul? Even the plant also has a soul. Because without the soul, there is no consciousness. The consciousness is a symptom of the soul. Whenever the soul goes away, the body is dead. Everything is uh, there, but the body is dead because the soul is not present. Everything is present. And interestingly, not only everything is present, the organ you can actually transplant if it is not accident or not damaged or not diseased. Uh, when, I, when you go to the driving license, they will ask, right, do you want to do, uh, register for the organ donation? You might have seen, right? What happens if you die in a road, you, your soul left, so you are dead, but your organs can be used liver or kidney can be used in heart, can be used in other places. So, which means that the organ is not dead, but still for some time, of course, slowly the blood will co coagulate, we all know those, um, then it will die, but sometime, it, for some time, it is still active, but it is still active in the dormant stage. So, it is, it is not dead, but still we say we are dead. Why? <coughs> because something is missing. What is missing? Uh, our Bhagavad Gita says that is soul and the same thing because of the soul's presence consciousness is present and because if that is the case then every living entity is the same thing what's the difference why not that it can't have soul and if there is a soul Shadrasha Upanishad says there is a super soul and who is Krishna if Krishna can guide us why Krishna can't guide us within the any living entities of course we can't imitate but Krishna can do this wonder because Krishna is present inside every living entity. That's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibited. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually made everyone to dance. So that's called, that's one of the important pastimes. In the age of Kali, Shannashi is forbidden. Shannash is forbidden. You can follow, right? In the age of Kali, Shannash is forbidden um, for ordinary man. One who changes his dress to move propaganda is a different man from the original ideal sannyasi. There is a verse in Veda, it says that in Kali Yuga there are five things which were allowed in the other Yuga is prohibited. What are those five things? One is Ashwamedh Yagta, that means fire, uh, sorry, uh, sacrificing the horse and then Gomedh Yagna, then giving, uh, offering the meats to the four brothers, uh, getting, uh, begetting child with uh, brother-in-law in case your husband expired uh, and then uh, sannas. So these are the five things was allowed earlier, but it is not allowed in the Kali Yuga because it's a contaminated age. So sannasi is not allowed. So Prabhupada says it, <coughs> for ordinary men, it is not allowed. We, we can still live in the home and practice Krishna consciousness. There is no reason why we should artificially renunciate. 
one who changes his dress to make a propaganda in a different uh, man from the original ideal sannyasi one should however take the vow to stop social intercourse completely and devote life exclusively to the service of the lord so as we grow up we should actually try to be materially detached and engage more in the service but that does not mean artificially we cut out all the relationship we from now onwards i will not see my wife son no wife no son no children come on they are all all part and parcel of krishna there is no harm to see him and there is no harm to in uh, reciprocate their feelings all that you have to need do is to engage them uh, in service of krishna not artificially leave them and we'll see bhagavad gita in in that regard one who changes his uh, okay so uh, the change of dress is just a formality Okay, Lord Chaitanya did not accept the name of Shannasi, and in the uh, age of the Kali, so-called Shannasi should not change their former names. Means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't change the name like you have right now. You have the Swami, these, these, these Maharaj, right? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't change it. Following in the footstep of Lord Chaitanya, in this age, devotional service of hearing and repeating the holy glories of the Lord is strongly recommended. So what is important is chanting and hearing, not an artificial renunciation. And one who takes the vow of renunciation of the family life need not imitate Oriprajak Acharya like Narod or Lord Chaitanya because it is not easy to move uh, everywhere in the forest, and without fear and then you know try to imitate so imitation is not allowed although follow you can follow but you can try to implement but not imitate but many sit down at the holy place and devote his whole time and energy to hear and repeatedly chant the holy scripture left by the grace great acharyas like six goshamis of Vrindavan. so Prabhupada says that there is no need to uh, uh, imitate lord chaitanya or um, uh, or uh, Narad Muni in this age, but rather you can stay in a holy place. It can be Brindavan or even it can be Iskand Calgary or even it can be in home. If you are serving Krishna, Krishna, that place is known as Brindavan. You can stay there, chant holy name, reach uh, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam and that should be enough for your uh, ultimate goal of uh, Krishna praying. Now, uh, if uh, obviously, uh, so what we will do? Let's, let's understand from the Bhagavad Gita uh, perspective uh, and then we will discuss some more points. So if you see Bhagavad Gita chapter 5, then it says Karma Yoga action in Krishna consciousness. So Arjuna asked, Arjuna said, Oh Krishna, first of all you ask me to renounce work and then again you recommend work with devotion. Now will you kindly tell me definitely which of the two is more beneficial? So you see, this question has come to Arjuna's mind. Renunciation is better or work is better or in devotion is better. What Krishna says is a clear answer. The personality of God is replied that renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation. But of the two, work in devotional service is better than the renunciation of the work. So Prabhupada is actually trying to tell the same thing. We don't need to artificially renunciate, but rather we engage ourselves in the service of the God and by the mercy of the God, automatically you will get a, uh, you will lose the taste of material attachment. Forcefully, if you try to uh, shut down the, uh, the, the material connection and the, our relation to family or the material attachment, it will not work. Oh, which verse is this? Bhagavad Gita, which verse? It talks that once you develop the uh, devotional service, automatically material attachment slowly goes away. Vishaya yeah. vini vartante nira harasya dehina rasya vajya rasya piyasya parandishta vivartate. How do we forget the dua taste? For example, today I like to eat meat, non-veg and all. How do I, if I try to stop it forcefully, right? For some days I may continue. But after some days, I will come back again because the taste is not gone. How to lose, how to leave the taste when you actually get a higher taste. Similarly, 
when you get a higher taste of serving krishna and chanting holy name and hearing the past time initially there might be struggle but once you start relishing it automatically going to cinema movie and uh, uh, gossiping or uh, criticizing all those mentality of uh, over endeavoring for the material things will slowly go down but that does not mean devotees should be uh, think that oh that means i don't need to do uh, material work here it is clearly said you need to do what is needed to maintain the family and yourself but most important is that develop the service attitude to krishna so that this over dependency and endeavoring of the material things will slowly go down just like a higher taste with a higher taste you will forget the lower taste that is the uh, that is the only way so between renunciation and the service of krishna today proper clearly say and here also bhagavad gita there is no need of the to be sannyasi to renunciate the family to artificially wear the uh, saffron color uh, and become you know a mendicant and then leave the family so when i remember when i was uh, uh, planning to marry or thinking to marry then my shiksha guru asked me i came from uh, honduras and then my shiksha guru asked me what do you want to do you want to marry or you want to live a life uh, uh, you know in service of krishna uh, being a brahmachari right then i said that i marry he said that think twice if you marry then you can't leave you are voluntarily taking the responsibility of a lady and of course your future children you cannot artificially leave the ashram and pretend like that you are a mendicant now 50 years uh, you know enough enjoyment done now i thank you very much i leave no it's not that if you have taken the duty if you have taken the so before taking the responsibility those bachelors who are bachelors think of what you want to do in your life if you are ready to take the responsibility then only you get to in the ashram but it's not mandatory that in the you know you need to renunciate as it is clearly called out even in the family staying in the family you can perfect in krishna consciousness we can see nitananda prabhu right he is a son he is a he is a grihastha then we see sarvabhama padacharya adaita acharya everybody is a grihastha we see in the iskon his guest um, vaisheshika prabhu his holiness skurt uh, dasodikari uh, maharaj so uh, everybody is a uh, grihastha but he can, they can actually excel because krishna consciousness is not limited to a particular condition particular stage particular ashram particular caste particular country particular religion particular society no that's why we call it international society it is international because it is applicable to all it is a society where everybody is there grihastha brahmachari you know sannyasi uh, whether is a uh, kshatriya vaishya shudra all the categories all the people krishna consciousness is open to all chaitanya mahaprabhu has given now you may ask oh well if that is so why we see that sannyasi in um, in our iskon right you know might have some question that well prabhupada is saying it's not important even rupa goshami is saying in the nectar of instruction the perfection of the bhakti is to stay near the uh, radha kunda you know who was is radha kunda radha kunda sampurna in vrindavan and to chant the holy name then why we see so many um Puri Puri Brajo Kacharya means traveling monk, uh, um, sannyasis who are traveling all over the world. This is for preaching. Actually, what happened um, after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Sharogoshami and all, they used to stay in Brindavan and pray or preach. Um, uh, now, <coughs> but what happened because of the Sahajya? some of the groups came this is just a history of our gorya vishnava some some uh, some sahajiya came they used to imitate krishna some of them used to decorate meal but they used to decorate themselves like a gopi some of them used to dance with the gopis and then they um, so lot of uh, contamination happens so in the bengal the educated uh, the people actually lost interest in the chaitanya mahaprabhu's culture because they thought oh this is such a you know degraded culture everybody is dancing with the girls and imitating like a girl what is this culture chaitanya mahaprabhu didn't say that 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself was a Krishna. She, he was in the mood of Radharan, but he never taught that you become mood of Radharan. He said that he, you in the servant mood, you serve. But some people become over smart and then uh, took this initiative. Therefore, this educated film, uh, society moved to the other society, other spiritual organization, or I would say religious organization like Ram Krishna Mission, Bharat Seva They are more into Karma Yoga. So this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's culture, you know, Vivekananda Ram Krishna Mission become very famous in the Bengal. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's culture actually getting lost or degraded. That is the time when Bhakti Vinod Thakur came. Now, it's not that there are no Paramahamsa. There are still Paramahamsa, like Jamanadas Bhakti Maharaj, Golkisho Das Bhakti Maharaj. There are a lot of Paramahamsa, but they live in their very secluded place. They're doing chanting. They don't come out and preach. But Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who is a magistrate in the Puri, he actually started uh, the, the reviving the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's original teaching. His son, so he spread it in Bengal. He, and then from uh, his son, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati who is a spiritual master of Srila he actually created a Gauriya Mart and uh, established all over India. And Prabhupada took it and uh, preached it into all over the world. So for the sake of preaching, they came out from their comfort zone and took the action of the Pradip Pratakacharya. So whatever, whoever you see the Sannasi, although Sannasi is not required, but for the sake of satisfying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's and establishing the real teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and enlightening the world, they took the pain. Have you seen the Maharaj, our Sanashi Maharaj, he is on his Japataka Sanashi Maharaj, he is on his, um, um, you know, all the other Maharaj, Gopal Krishna Goswami, he is on his Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. They are getting old, but still they are traveling. They even they get difficulty. But still they are traveling for the sake of the following people. Here it is says, right, Narad Muni actually to become fearless. And they, he, um, uh, he actually uh, traveled all over the world. His holiness Indodumna Shai Maharaj. His holiness, um, uh, uh, there are many actually. And Russia, maybe, you know, one day we can discuss about the Russia, how the preaching happened in Russia. So, you know, in the KGB time. But anyway, the thing is that they are all fearless. They took this mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and preached. Now, since this is a sum and summary of that um, topic, but since the topic came preaching, let's little bit spend time. What is the meaning of preaching? Any, anything. <laughs> I know you guys are preaching, the boys in the Sankirtan, do is the university preaching, a lot of things are happening, all of you know. But what is your understanding of preaching? Sorry? Giving Krishna. Like, you know, it says Janatana Prokara, no Mono Krishna Vibhisha. Somehow or other, bring living entities closer to Krishna. Yes, very good. Any other thought? Yes. It's like after the class and you feel like. Very nice. So once you are, it's like I always say that if you have a billion and trillion of dollars, you can always spend, right? But if your heart is empty, you can't. But when your heart becomes connected with Krishna and uh, you are filled up with Krishna, it overflows naturally as a part of, as a symptom of your compassion. Any other thought? Yes, sharing the knowledge to enlightening them to come out from the ignorance. Yes, other thing, other point, other thought. Why? What is preaching means? I will. Uh, any other one? Any other? We shall go. Okay. So um, time is short, so we'll go fast. So I will give uh, the perspective that uh, you know my guru Maharaj gave. And I liked it, of course, and that's why I'm sharing. So um, he said, preaching means care. Because we care, that's why we share. We share prasadam, we share holy name, we share books, knowledge. But question may come, why do we care? Because we love. And why do we love? Because we know the relationship of every living entities with God. 
Mahamai Vamsha Jiva Loke Jiva Buddha Sanatana. All the living entities, not only human beings, all the living entities are the part and parcel of Krishna. Naturally, we fall into the universal brotherhood. If there's a saying, let's say, uh, you know, that universal brotherhood cannot be established without establishing the universal fatherhood. We are trying to artificially, we are trying to artificially create a universal brotherhood. But until unless there's a linkage of universal fatherhood, what is the way to link the universal brotherhood? So, preaching means caring. And we care because we love and we love because we know the relationship. Therefore, a natural symptom of compassion, as you said, overwhelms, it flows out, it comes out as a, as a consequence of the natural love that we develop through the chanting and hearing and connecting to the Krishna. So, if you look at Prabhupada's mini, I heard a lecture where you know, senior devotees said that um, we initially, when these uh, hippies, they converted into um, uh, devotee, right? But initial stage, they used to come into the matchless gift, right? In the New York uh, to listen to Prabhupada. They don't understand so much philosophy, but they, they can see the genuine love that is coming out from the Shri And that may take their heart. It is the love that can bind people. It is the love that can change your heart. It is not an artificial selling books or artificially convincing someone. It is not a book score that is important. It, it is at the end how you connect someone through your loving message and change your heart is very important. Many times we say, you know, my husband is not favorable. My wife is not favorable. I have difficulties with my children. You know, I don't know how to engage in Krishna consciousness, how to initiate. But Shastra says, Nitya Shiddha Krishna Prem Shaddha Kabunai Shobhanadi Shuddha Chitte Karapaya. It is not that we, we are trying to make someone devotee. Everybody in this material world is part and parcel of Krishna. Everybody is devotee. It is just in some living entities the it is little dormant stage and some case some for some cases the symptom starts coming just like a cloudy sky the sun is still there it is because of the cloud we can't see so it should not say that oh he's like my husband you know it's like a devil you know? no everybody is a devotee so every, with everyone we should we should um, we should uh, interact with the love and compassion because everybody is a part and parcel of Krishna. It's just a matter of time, either in this life or next life. It's, it, what, what's the big deal? We have done billions and trillions of life. Just one or two life is just a small snapshot. All that we need to say that we are there to care for you. That feeling of care and the love will change the heart. That is the real essence of preaching. That is the real essence Lord Chaitanya wanted to uh, you know, do. And this Pariprajak Acharya, they took so much pain to go. Even, you know, Mahaprabhu told to Nityananda Prabhu, Jare deko tare kao Krishna Upadesh amar agai guru hoi ya Whoever you see, you just spread the love of Krishna consciousness. And Nityananda Prabhu, Balaram himself, master of trillion of universe, what he did, he used to go to home, house to house, and when somebody opens the house, they can't see Nitana the door. You know why? Because he is lying flat. Please chant Harish. That is the humble stage. You know the Jagai Mother story. Jagai Mother was a, was a very cruel person, and then Nitana the Prabhu said, Let me try to preach. And he started to show compassion. Mother actually threw a pot and it broke the, uh, uh, you know, it came, blood came out. Mahaprabhu wanted to kill them, but Nityananda Prabhu begged, no, 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 please forgive them. That's a sense of love, compassion. And the ultimate compassion is that, we, we always say that the voyage of compassion is Srila Prabhupada's journey for the West to East. It's called voyage of ultimate compassion. That the compassion that Vaishnava has in their heart as a natural consequence of the loving, 
love is actually spread from the east to west. That is the real meaning of the preaching. So when next time you meet somebody outside and also it is not that preaching means just to go to Sankirtan or just to giving lecture or go to university talk. No, anybody and everybody can play a role of preaching either in their house, their work, they are in the temple, anywhere, everywhere by their example. Acharya means you set the example of your life to preach. A housewife can actually set an example. A husband can also set an example. Kids can set an example. By the example, kids will learn. My, I, I after Shabbat was born, I asked. Uh, my Guru Maharaj, my Shiksha Guru and all. Maharaj, will you be devotee? Will you be devotee? Always parents always have tension, right? You know, devotee parents always have this constant tension. So, you know, my Shiksha Guru said, plus you do acharan. You set the example of your life. He will automatically do it. So, we need to see that everybody we need to deal with the love and compassion. So next time when somebody comes to the temple, uh, and then of course we need to little av av avoid the offenders, but most of the people are ignorant and innocent. Deal with love and compassion. It's not pushing or selling the books. Yes, we want to sell the books because we believe by reading Shiva Prabhupada's books, this knowledge can come out easily. But even if somebody doesn't take books, that's hey, doesn't even take a Bhagavad Gita. What is this? No. Everybody has Krishna Prem. It is just a matter of fanning the spark. You know, we call it fan the spark. Bhashya Shikapa used to say, our duty is to fan the spark. What happens if you fan the spark? The, span, uh, the spark becomes big fire. Krishna consciousness is there in everyone's heart. We just need to be tolerant, compassionate, love, give love and appreciation to just fend the spark. It's a matter of time it will come to you. You don't give it. That's such a Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Shri Prabhupada's teaching. So, now, do we have 10 minutes? Is it okay to borrow 10 minutes from your uh, honoring Prashadam time? Uh, sorry for that. I could not finish it. I don't know. Little went into the flow. Anyway, so I will just touch base that. Yes. You are, you are asking the Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, or uh, this Bhagavad Gita one? Whatever that is. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Oh, okay, so this is first canto, um, ch chapter 6, verse 13. 1.6.13. Chapter 6, verse 13. It's one six thirty. Um, it's Veda base we are reading. Uh, if you know that Veda base, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, English translation online available. Just go to the Google and say SB space 1.6.13. 1 1.6.13. 1 oh, <laughs> and you get the link, you open it, you will get it there. Veda okay, base. Thank you very much. Okay, so a little bit, um, uh, I will just uh, talk about Advaita um, Acharya. Now, let me, you know, I will just. So, you can see this, many of you must be aware of this picture, right? <laughs> Many of you must be aware of this picture. Yeah, is it? Yes, right? So, who is there in the middle? Yeah. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We discuss his Krishna himself. Okay. And why everybody is doing this? Surrendering to Krishna, right? Just so beautiful, right? And, uh, and then this side, you can see this. Uh, this. One minute. Just, yeah. Maybe we should also have a picture at the back here. No, I mean, uh, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but that is little dancing mood, no? Uh, just one minute. I want to do one thing. Just give me one minute, please. Yeah, I should do this.
So you can see the medial is Chetanomoto, the blue uh, dhoti that is in um, from our side it is left hand side that is Nityananda Prabhu who is Balaram whose appearance is coming in the next week and then this one is Advaita Acharya Prabhu whose appearance just went two days before 15 who is actually Mahavishnu and then in other side this is Gadadhar who is Radharani's uh, incarnation and then Radharani herself and then this is Shibash Pandit which is a Narod Muni. So this is the Kali Yuga Avatar. Now, now we will discuss little bit our Advaita Acharya. There is a verse, can you please repeat? Panchatattva Takam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sharupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Khan Namami Shakti Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although is Krishna came as a devotee Nityananda Prabhu is an expansion of the devotee. He is Balaram, so expansion of our devotee. Advaita Acharya Prabhu is the incarnation of devotee because he is a Mahavishnu or Karanakshay Vishnu. The Godadar Pandit, who is Radharani, is the energy of a devotee because who is Radharani is energy of Krishna and Narad Muni is a devotee form. So this is the called the five truth. Now we will go to um, uh, Vedavish. And one minute. Why it is not loading? One minute. Sorry, some some issue maybe. I just want to go the particular thing and then because I want to talk from Shastra, not I. So, yeah, please be with me for one, two minutes. Um, Hello. You can see, yeah. So, this is Chaitanya Chaitamrita. If you go to Adi Lila, oh, in the chapter one, there are First 14 verse for your information is called Mangala Charan. First verse is for spiritual master, then 5 verse is for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then Nityananda Prabhu 5 verse, then 2 verse is for Advaita Acharya, and last verse is for Panchatattva. Those who are really interested to know the Panchatattva, and this is a good time because Mahaprabhu's birthday is coming, please go through the first 14 verse, but we will go to the Advaita Acharya Prabhu's verse, this is 12 and 13. So please repeat after me. Mahavishnu Jagatkarta Maya Yaya Srijati Ada Tasho Abhutara Evayam Adaito Acharya Ishwaraha Lord Adaito Acharya is the incarnation of Mahavishnu. Who is Mahavishnu? is a Karunakshay Vishnu from there all the universe came. Krishna did not create the universe directly. Krishna's incarnation is um, uh, Mahavishnu, Karunakshay Vishnu and from there all the universe, not only this universe but millions of universe came out. Whose main function is to create cosmic world through the action of Maya. Okay. Then Addaitam Hari Addaitat Acharayam Bhakti Shamsana Bhakta Abhutaram Ishamtam Adyaito Acharyam Asraye Because he is non different from Hori, the Supreme Lord, he is called Adyaito. Adyaito Acharya has two words. One is Adyaito, one is Acharya. Adyaito means non dual, Doito means dual. Right? Like Bhagavad Gita is a dual duality. What? Soul, supreme. Two dual substances. Advaita means non-dual. Why we call he is called Advaita? Because he is non-different from Hori, because he is Mahavishnu. Why he is called Acharya? Because he lives by the example. 
we are, we, we are just talking about the Acharya, right? Paribrachak Acharya. Leads by the example. We are encouraging everybody to lead by the example. So everybody of you, Shilo, by the mercy of Shilo Prabhupada, can be an Acharya. Of course, in a, not in level of Advaita Acharya, but Acharya, by your own example in your family. And because he propagates the cult of devotion, he is called Acharya. He is the Lord and the incarnation of the Lord's devotee. Therefore, I take shelter of him. So this is the two verse. Now, Advaita Acharya, why he is so important is that actually Advaita Acharya came first and he saw the Kali Yuga degradation and he understood it is only Krishna who can actually eliminate all those misconceptions and can teach us the devotional cult, uh, cult. So every evening what he used to do, he used to take the Ganga Jal and with the Tuloshi, he used to worship the Saligram Sila and with, uh, with a loud voice he used to say Hari Bol, Hari Bol and he used to cry and beg Krishna for the appearance. That is why he, uh, Krishna came as Chaitanya. That is one of the reason why Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because of the sincere request of his devotee Advaita Acharya. So that's why we are eternally debted to Advaita Acharya that because of his mercy and because of his cry, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, and because of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Today, Shiloh Prabhupada established ISKCON and because of ISKCON, we are here discussing Krishna Katha sitting in Calgary, far away from Vrindavan, but still discussing the most confidential secret of Krishna Prem. It is only possible starting from Advaita Acharya, Nityananda Prabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Shiloh Prabhupada. And Nityananda Prabhu, I don't want to discuss more. Nityananda Prabhu is actually Balaram. Without Nityananda Prabhu's mercy, without Advaita Acharya Prabhu's mercy, you can't get Chaitanya Nithai. And means Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu's. And without Nityananda Prabhu's mercy, you cannot get Mahaprabhu. That's a sum and substance. We can discuss further in many, many other subsequent calls. Its time is over. I just want to say thank you very much for listening and bearing me for one hour. Hare Krishna. Everybody, anybody has any reflection, uh, comments, question, or clarification, please? We have one, two, two minutes. Anybody wants to share their reflection and some kind, you know, something that strike you or something you liked or something you didn't like or you have some question? I will try if I can answer something. Anybody? Yes. Uh, we talk about the importance of hearing. We also that. Uh, so when we chant, uh, we want you to hear. Yes. But it's also like there's another thing of seeing, like you try to meditate on uh, Krishna's any form or uh, so. Can a little bit talk about the importance of hearing and what's the difference between like hearing and seeing? Uh, in Kali Yuga, hearing is most important. There is a reason for that. If you see, uh, when an embryo is in the mother's home, almost like six months or something, they start six months or four months, they start hearing. Hearing is the uh, the first organ that becomes active even in the embryo form, even in the mother's womb. And hearing is the last organ that goes away. So when you are like somebody is in death bench, you will see that we do some chanting or we do some kirtan or we read Bhagavad Gita or something, something we do. Even Christian read some uh, Bible. Why? Because even if all the other seeing and all the other things becomes inactive, Hearing is the last stage, up to the last stage, hearing becomes active. Therefore, in the Kali Yuga, this is, this is a science I talk. So, therefore, in the Kali Yuga, must emphasis is given on the hearing. Okay? Uh, sometimes seeing is also important, but seeing, you may not understand always that he is Krishna. In the Kali Yuga, Nam Nam Kari Bahudani Jasharabha Shakti Tatra Pita Niyomita Smarani Kalo. We, we chant the Siksha Shama. That means Krishna's name and Krishna is non-different. The whole, the power of the Krishna's, everything is given in the holy name. So much emphasis has, in the Kali Yuga has been given in the um, name. So when we chant, it is also hearing because when we chant, we also hear and then uh, it's also hearing. So hearing means hearing the pastime of Krishna. Now, seeing is also important because while, while seeing the deity, you appreciate because we are in the mundane stage, we don't have that much of taste. 
deity form is important but glorifying i mean beautifying the deity coming here seeing is important but more than seeing because what you might not realize that you you may think that this is krishna but you do not have the complete under uh, conviction that is krishna but you will say that it's a brigraha it's a deity or statue or brigraha but Krishna is somehow, uh, you know, this particular represent Krishna. Many people has many different kind of understanding. Oh, this is a statue. Some people don't, don't know. Some people little advanced. They say, oh, it's a vigraha, but it represents Krishna. But actual Krishna is there. So we do not have the understanding. This is nothing but the actual Krishna. Why? Because we have some mental covering, ignorance. That ignorance we need to remove by the chanting of the Holy Name. And when you chant the holy name, then on here the past time, this removes the ignorance. And by removing the ignorance, you can actually experience this is none other than Krishna. So that realization will come only when this ignorance is removed. So in the Kali Yuga, therefore it is much emphasis has been given. And also it is not always possible to come here and see, um, you know, sometimes you know, I asked uh, many uh, experienced devotee and the senior devotees, is it okay that while chanting, I will start meditating some Krishna's form, you know, some kind of ordinary <laughs> picture, I can keep it. So they said, it might be helpful, but just only concentrate holy name of Krishna. That is the answer. Because holy name of Krishna is everything. Everything, it has got every power. We should have a strong uh, faith, holy name, and our spiritual master. It's like a railway track, uh, two uh, side by side railway track. It's both are important. If we have a surrender nature with uh, our good name, our spiritual master, and if we have a complete faith of holy name, everything is revealed. Krishna will come by your on your tongue by himself. You don't need to go, Krishna will come. So that is the understanding of the Shastra and we commented in Kuliu. But as you know, you know, we like to create a beautiful garland, so nice, we appreciate. This is also recommended because Mahaprabhu has given five limbs. Um, one of the five limbs means is Sadhu Sangha, uh, Bhagavad uh, Sravan, um, staying in the Tirtha, um, and then uh, Bigraha Sheva Prasad Shevan. So uh, five limbs has been given. So one of the link is also the deity. That's why Iskon also does the deity worship. But in order to understand this deity is non-different from Krishna. He is Krishna. You need the power of holy name to remove that, uh, that enlightenment. Uh, to not remove means to enable the enlightenment. That is the uh, scripture. Does it answer your question? Hare Krishna. Any other thought questions? No? Thank you very much, Jagadurush. Oh, yes. Can I ask you a question outside of this? Yes, if I can answer. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of words refer in mythology and uh, myth as uh, two different things, right? And I came across one word, uh, Shiva Charaji, uh, and it also refers to uh, scriptures as mythology. So what is your comment on the word myth here? I don't, I don't know what is the real difference. Is there any, anybody knows what is the difference between the word my, myth and mythology? For me it is same. For me it is same. Whether it's a mythology or myth. And does anybody know uh, that what is the real grammatical difference? Yes, mythology word basically means knowledge Okay. 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 Myth is like a rumor kind of. Uh, so myth is some some. Okay. 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 Got it. Yeah. You I got the answer between myth and my. But our our thing is no. It's neither mythology nor myth. It is actually the history, and that is given by the uh, best day. Now, how uh, we know that this is not a mythology? For example, we can argue who is my father. Right, I can have a way to do a DNA test. Popa give example that we, we can go on doing two DNA tests, but trillion and trillion of people can you find a, a, your father by doing the DNA test? Is it practically possible? What is the best way to do that? 
to ask your mother, who knows who is my father, other than my mother. Of course, Krishna knows everything, but you can't ask Krishna. So, uh, the best way to ask mother, Veda is our mother. And if Veda proclaims Krishna is our father, we accept it. Now you can keep on arguing, just like keep on arguing, oh, I am uh, bright, he is black. No, he can't be my father. No, you can keep on arguing like that. You can keep on uh, doing the DNA test. But that's not going to give you the solution. Because there are trillion and trillion of people. So because this is written by the Oppo ratio, this Veda is written by the Oppo ratio. Now there is no direct way of proving it, right? That's why Krishna consciousness, there are nine stages and the first stage is called Shraddha or faith. Unless you do not have a faith, it will not start. Once you have faith, then you will start. Then you will, uh, like if, if I say, uh, Rasagulla is so, very sweet, you know Rasagulla, you know, wow, such a sweet thing. Without tasting, you will understand. I may tell you a billion touches, so sweet, so sweet. You will not understand the sweetness unless you taste it. So we invite everybody, please come and join and chant Hare Krishna. You yourself will be convinced, these are not my thoughts. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Thank you. 